Hey guys, hope you're all doing very well. It is the 29th of September today and we're going to do our weekly update on Cryptology. All right, so I must say Bitcoin, Ethereum and much of crypto, to be honest, haven't done all that much in the last week or so since we did our last update. So if we zoom in, just going on the four hourly, you can really see here this tight consolidation that we've got. So it's 22nd of September, we did the last video, which was in and around this point here. So we're pretty much still stagnant, hovering around the same position, just really consolidated since that last video. So I have to say, there's not really a huge amount to update with regards to, you know, the target, um, the long term play out. I think that was all mentioned in quite a lot of detail. Um, so no changes to the kind of forecast, still anticipating further downside into around 13 and a half K, at which point we could see a potential bounce. I will have to assess nearer the situation. Um, obviously, there is the chance that we could plow through this, in which case that would this level will then turn into resistance. OK, so I would wait for confirmation to see how price reacts at this point. But for now, I still see price gravitating into this point here. Last week, we spoke about the variable counts that could take us down to this point. And I have to say it's all leaning towards a five wavish move. So a rather impulsive looking move a one, two, three, four, five. Um, and so if you have an impulse down, trying to make sense of the whole Elliott wave picture, I would see it as a wave A, and then potential B wave correction, probably into around this point. I think this is the most obvious area to eat into this point at around 30K, where we've got this very nice swing low. And I think it's also either a 50 I think it's a 50% retracement of the, the move down if we go from top down to this point here yeah there we have it so it's about a 50% retracement into this point here okay so it's just these are ballpark targets for now so a coming down to here B up to 30k C down to around this kind of area of around 7k okay so the more points ahead you look the less accurate it obviously is because they all depend on you know the first point holding which is this 13 and a half k so what i would say is i always have a bit of a roadmap in mind but the the the, the, the your nearest milestone which is this 13 and a half k this is all we need to be focused on right now okay so we'll see if this completes and confirms itself if not we'll rearrange but if it does then obviously next target we'll be looking at is this move up to 30k and i mentioned in doing that move you might see a lot more aggressive moves to the upside on lower market cap assets on crypto so your, your altcoins uh which could rally a lot harder and potentially make new all-time highs and we'll obviously home in on those when those opportunities arise Okay, um, so yeah, as I say, not a huge amount to add here. This pitchfork certainly holding the price action best. It's a modified shift pitchfork. Previously, we were adhering to a, an original pitchfork, but with the more data coming in, we can see that pr this is by far the, the best pitchfork holding the price action very nicely. You can see how the lines are getting respected very clearly here, uh, just guided by the lower median line, which I think we're, we could just hug all the way down here and we're talking about a move into the end of the year, so end of December, beginning of January, where I'm looking for a potential a turnaround point. Okay, so no major changes. We can look on our um, higher time frame, 200 week simple moving average. It's going on the weekly to see that. Uh, let's hide everything else. So yeah, very firmly you can see. You know, never lost this 200 week simple moving average before. You can see always that to the support, support, supports, you know, just a few weeks beneath it. Now we've had multiple weeks beneath this line. Clearly, it's a concerning sign, uh, very much in a bear market. And um, yeah, I wouldn't. Of course, we can look for bullish opportunities before getting back above this line. But I must say, from an investor point of view, investors aren't going to be very interested in buying in at this moment here we're still very close to this 200 week simple moving average there's a lot of room to the downside still um so yeah ominous sign when you you find yourself beneath the 200 week simple moving average and all of a sudden instead of working as support it's acting as resistance then we can briefly just bring ourselves to the camera la pivot so this two um this weekly camera la pivot here i mentioned the s4 
very very significant wanted to see if that could hold a support obviously it didn't came dip beneath now acted as a resistance and we've just plowed down from there and as i say i do think this year will finish beneath the s4 in which case subsequent year you would wait for these camera pivots to occur come january um, of 2023 and we would be looking for a run into the s3 or s4 so it would be interesting to see where those levels lie next year that will help us further home in on our target for our, our bottom um, okay uh, we can take a look at the daily so on the daily this is our monthly period so the month of september coming to a close very soon and it looks like we're going to hold above the s3 but yeah uh, I don't think we're going to go too high. We might make it to the R3 on the subsequent month of October, um, possibly. But yeah, this has acted as pretty good support so far. But the bounce here that we've seen is very corrective as it bounced up. Uh, so I see it coming down very, very soon. Uh, going on the four hourly now. So for this week, we had a, an attempt to break out the R4 that failed. Uh, subsequent rally once more again hits the R4 now we look like most likely we're going to finish this week beneath the R3 which is a concerning sign you know you're trying it's trying to break out of the R4 in fact it was above the R4 falling back beneath the R3 to close the week would be a big sign of weakness right there on on the intraday which is our 15 minute time frame nothing uh, to be honest it's not particularly useful uh, it's a relatively weak day making a bit of a comeback you can argue that was a, a rather aggressive move up that was looking a bit corrective so could we make another move up it's possible certainly possible uh, on the lower time frames but that does not alter our long-term perspective it just means we might potentially take out this high but it's not really something to get excited about in my view um, so let's go back to daily take off the camera the pivots and bring back our drawings so yes this is the the roadmap no major changes here um so that is that on bitcoin and then if we just take a look at ethereum ethereum as i say across crypto we've not seen anything dramatic and ethereum's no different uh, again just consolidated here just to recap on ethereum again we've got a, a valid five wave move down to make a one two three four five so another low to be made around 750 dollars i did speak about i think in last week's video we spoke about how ethereum was it last week or the week before i'm not too sure but i spoke about ethereum potentially having relative strength over the rest of crypto um especially following the merge which would resolve a lot of its issues with scalability um which i still maintain i think we've had a little bit of unexpected weakness come into ethereum because there's been a bit of confusion about Ethereum perhaps acting as a security, in which case it might have to abide by the SEC regulations, SEC regulations. So um, similar thing happened to Ripple in the past. You know, it's often a little bit of a gray area whether something's acting as a, a cryptocurrency asset purely or whether it's also perhaps acting as more of a security. So i think that's the concern there may have been some regulations that could be imposed upon ethereum so i think that was the unexpected um bad news that allowed a bit more selling pressure to come in on ethereum so looking at this we are as i say well the bigger pitch for modified shift just like on a on bitcoin rather we're coming down just held up at the lo lower meeting that i do think we could come down to this uh lower warning line here okay i do think that's possible um and that's supported if we just take a look at bitcoin dominance quickly i thought we were breaking to the downside but in fact we might be just rallying a little bit on bitcoin dominance once more so i i had the impression you know this move down here taking out these lows we were going to break out to the downside this could for the year it might eat back into this this mid range here so that's bitcoin strength over altcoins which means Basically, it doesn't mean Bitcoin's going to go up. It just means Bitcoin is going to do better than altcoins as we continue our downward trend. So it basically means altcoins will sell off faster than Bitcoin. So I do think this could keep coming up here. Bitcoin dominance into the end of the year. Maybe coming up into this halfway point right here. of This consolidation that's marked out around this point. Uh, so into around here, up to around 43%, 44%. 
bringing us to the end of the year let's put a little price tag where we think that will probably come so our end of the year around here so it could do something like that and that would obviously mean that altcoins sell off faster than bitcoin and then if we just come back to the ethereum chart uh, just bear with me let's find that now so here it is so that is a more drastic sell-off we're going from a lower median line to a lower warning line whilst on bitcoin we're talking about just adhering to the lower median line okay so it's a more aggressive sell-off that we're looking out for on ethereum and across alts now that we seem to be moving a little bit higher on bitcoin dominance which can be anticipated to continue for the end of this year um, so once this lower warning line is lost, which I'm not too bothered about, I already know, I can tell that this is going to break very, very soon to the downside. Um, so the pitch was pretty negligible, but we're just being held up at this lower warning line as well as this lower median line. I expect it to come down a lot faster once it breaks this point. So we're currently sat around $1,200 to $1,300. Um, but we're looking to almost half that value as we come down to around $750. Um, Okay, so yeah, Ethereum, again, no major change to what we've been forecasting. Um, we can just cover the voted chart also, which was our uh, Wilder World versus Tether. Um, interesting asset, sounds like uh, a metaverse project and um, introducing lots of different NFT variations, whether it's um, cars, land, real estate trainers all all that kind of stuff uh, it sounds interesting even wild animals uh, which they refer to as beasts as well so interesting kind of i don't know if it's like a gaming concept not too sure but sounds like it could be good uh but that's not going to go against the tide which is still bearish in my opinion so i would say that we're following this downward pitchfork uh first second third pivots original pitchfork and the pitch up held reasonably well. I think the 1.5 line actually gives a little bit more support and resistance. You can see this line, 1.5, that seems a bit of a resistance here. Now, where we currently sit, we could come back up to the upper warning line. I can see a little bit of a curving nature to this chart, which might allow it to push up a bit more into the upper warning line once more. But I would expect it to follow the course of Bitcoin and Ethereum and continue down. Um, so downside targets so first of all let's go on the weekly why did we bounce at this point here it was an interesting level which is best seen on the weekly you got a very interesting historic doji at this point here so this candle here the second candle on this chart so we're on uh this is gate io the um exchange that the data is taken from so it was this uh candle back 24th of may that weekly doji very significant uh, to see a, a doji on the weekly level so that is where we found a bit of support so as i say i think we're going to come down again take out that low so where would i see the next level of support well i would be looking at this weekly close down here so this is your weekly range uh so i'll be looking at this 0 0.08 tether um to come down to and i think it could still be a gradual gradient probably just following this upper median line uh, into the end of the year so this point here you know end of december beginning of january um so daily time frame let's just have a better look to zoom in a little bit so i think it's going to be a slow burn downwards taking out that low uh you might even find it comes up and gets drawn to the upper warning line when it eventually breaks it it could be something like that and that that brings us dead on to the end of the year um so yeah, something that's kind of sloping. So you can see it'd be more of a sloping, curved, bottoming out as it comes into this point that could then eventually start turning upwards after that end of the year period. So that's the kind of move I'd be looking out for here on Wild versus Tether. Uh, of course, if we see Bitcoin, Ethereum suddenly, let's say, let's go back to Bitcoin to talk about our invalidation points. Let's. Uh, Invalidation of to what I've been talking about would be Bitcoin getting above the median line. Okay, that would be rather unexpected for it to get above the median line. Uh, I think that would, might even take it above the 200 week simple moving average or get very, very close to it. So that would be my invalidation point. Bitcoin are getting above the median line. If it does that, then Wild could suddenly start shooting up. Certainly, 
but I just don't really forecast it. Um, so yeah, for now, I'd be bearish on all crypto assets. Okay, so with all of that said, we will just touch on what we're seeing on NASDAQ because there's been a little bit more interesting price action to update on. So we're seeing additional weakness coming in as anticipated. So on the daily here, so last week I said that I think we were, it was this, was it this candle, 22nd of, yeah, so 22nd, this was the candle, yeah. I mentioned it had fallen beneath this very important upper median line and so I didn't think it was going to continue up so and since then we've just completely trended down we did come back up in this downtrending pitchfork only as high as the median line of this smaller pitchfork here uh, and then we've absolutely tanked today terrible day indeed um, and we'll bring up the 200 weeks simple moving average in a moment which is very interesting but let's just look at this on the four hourly you can appreciate this smaller pitchfork which is really holding the price action very very nicely so this kind of sideways consolidation, maybe a bit of an expanding triangle type play, a megaphone pattern of some sort there. It looks like getting gearing up to break to the downside. And yeah, just we came into the median line. That's where we absolutely plowed back down today. Um, so and then obviously, yeah, the weekly time frame has gone the simple moving average and take off all the other numbers have put the 200 week simple moving average just remove that and so let's just recap so the 200 week simple moving average very very important what happened in the 2008 recession we three wave moved down bounced about into the halfway point of this consolidation here and then we came down when we broke it absolute mayhem waterfall moment in the markets you can see a little bit of a pause on the second attempt to break it there's your doji weekly candle then we close beneath a little bit of a, a retest. You can see this big wick here. Once we came down, we came back where to 200 weeks just to make sure it is resistant. And then look what followed. Okay, and this happened fast from here to here. This is from September through to November. Okay, so it's over the course of three months. Okay, very, very quick move and really catastrophic. So don't forget downward moves in the stock markets are much much faster than the moves up that is because it's associated with fear and people don't kind of gradually jump in when it comes to uh, selling and you know moves based on fear you know they, they sit they sell very quickly and protect their assets as fast as possible so um yes that's what happened last time and then now what's going on so we've come down uh, very in very close to 200 weeks simple moving average we've then rallied back into this consolidation here similar to last time in 2008 now we've come back down hovering around the 200 weeks simple moving average so what you want to be focusing on as i said last time we had a bit of a doji around this point so will we get a doji maybe close the week somewhere around this current point it looks like we probably will you know tomorrow's the last day of the week for the stock markets so we'll see how that closes might print a little bit of a doji and then it'll be the next week which will be very very sorry very important you'd expect well if it's going to play out anything like last time 2008 we'd expect to move down and then a retest of the 200 weeks simple moving average and that is when the fantastic opportunities for shorting will come in yeah after your retest then it should come down without an absolutely free fall for a few months potentially Okay, so possible play out if we are going to see kind of any fractal of 2008. Um, and so, yeah, that's the kind of play I'll be looking out for. So NASDAQ, as I say, the 200 week simple moving average on the NASDAQ is very, very important. It's the most volatile of the US indices uh, carrying, you know, the tech stocks, which are very much um, carried by hype. And so for that kind of a market to fall beneath the 200 weeks simple moving average would be very very concerning you can see the pandemic um low only made it as far as a 200 weeks simple moving average and then absolutely catapulted us up to extreme heights um so yeah let's see if it can do that again so i'm not too sure it can but uh let's see um so that is the nasdaq 
Um, so some interesting things on Forex, which we can discuss as well. I'm sure many of you will have heard about the kind of chaos within the kind of fiscal policy within the UK, where they've, during a cost of living crisis, decided to um, give a massive tax break to the, the mega rich, essentially, uh, which is obviously confused and upset a lot of people. Uh, but it's also concerning because they've basically created a massive deficit which has to be replaced by um, central bank or Bank of England uh, bond buying uh, from the government, uh, which is essentially QE, quantitative easing, which is the thing that caused this whole hyperinflatory situation in the first place. So we're just flame, you know, adding fuel to the fire. Uh, it's a really cha chaotic moment. But the Bank of England saying it had to be done because otherwise, you know, there were things like pension funds that were going to go broke, essentially. So so it's a scary business. You know, bonds really uh, are the kind of fundamentals to our uh, economy. Um, so let's just took a, take a look at the dollar. Uh, let's bring that up. FX dollar so dollar interesting chart this one so uh let's take off the moving averages so i wanted to show you a very key high time frame pitch which is big one here all the way back again post financial crisis okay so this is the major pitch walk first second third pivots so dollar has essentially gone from this point here at 70 all the way up to 114 in the last 14 years or so, yeah, 2008, 2022. And the question is, is that, are we gonna now start collapsing in the dollar? It's possible, it's possible. Uh, I mean, I spoke about this high running into the end of the year, but obviously we've, we've done it a lot faster than anticipated. Um, so, Difficult, difficult to say. We might just consolidate and make another high. Way too early to to say, but you got to appreciate. You know, we're very overbought on the dollar. I mean, we knew we were overbought already following this pitchfork, but we were not just overbought from this point here, from December twenty twenty through to now. We're overbought over the last fourteen years. Okay, so here you could argue there was still room in this massive cycle for us to accelerate to the upside still but now we've hit the upper warning line there also so i think you've got to from a buyer's point of view you've got to consider that a potential big drawback on the dollar here which essentially means strength on the euro perhaps probably strength on the pound as well which is massively oversold um so yeah, you might end up seeing a bit of a weakening in the dollar. Now, what will that do for dollar priced assets, including Bitcoin? It could help. It will, it will have an influence. But obviously, if we're seeing less investor sentiment, uh, you know, investors generally scared off by a falling stock market, they're not going to start, you know, just, well, they might start accumulating commodities, but I don't think that's going to really stop commodities price and dollars falling completely. OK, I think the downward trend will continue, but it might make it curve off a little bit and come down at a slower gradient. Uh, so that's what I'll be anticipating on dollar priced assets. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to highlight this very, very important pitchforks. The main thing I just wanted to highlight from uh, the dollar chart here. So we're already coming to our target that I was looking out for. I thought it was going to do it slowly into the end of the year. It decided to just go absolutely haywire and take us to this point straight away. So if we go on the dollar, we can see already since hitting this point, big daily sell off. I think that was that yesterday, I think. Yeah, Wednesday's candle, that one. So with that said, let's pull up the euro. So the euro, obviously, pretty much inverse to the dollar. I think the dollar basket is fifty made up 50% of, um, of the euro. Yeah, it's paired against... Essentially, what it's paired against is half of what it's paired against is the euro. So you will see a, a, a big inverse relationship. So when you see dollar really plowing down, of all the other currencies that that's going to impact, it's going to be the euro most of all. Uh, and 
yeah in an inverse way so the euro let's just look at where we stand here uh, I think we need to go on the weekly to look at this we are at this point down here now I think that's a 0 0.5 line that it hit if I remember correctly so there we go we've hit the 0 0.5 to the T we did it back here also okay the 0 0.5 line is important on these very high time frame outlook so i think we could have had a, a low here also of interest from this low to this high we've hit the 0.786 fib retracement okay so again another reason we could have some euro strength here uh, now the pound well we'll come to the pound let's stick to euro just for a minute sorry um okay euro we would want to see it back above this median line before getting too excited because that will probably act as some degree of resistance okay going on the daily we can see it a bit closer now I would be interested in looking for opportunities here on the euro certainly let's go on the four hourly you can see it already it's really starting to race okay today again is going to be another very bullish day on the euro no doubt okay it's just as I speak we're just going up and up and up and up so yeah i do anticipate strength in the euro strength in the pound as well i'm not too sure if it's going to be as aggressive probably will be aggressive on the pound as well just because it's so oversold um but yeah that's the euro so that's interesting and um the pound is looking like this so huge huge sell-off let's go on the weekly to look at this so the weekly so you can see this pitchfork, we can forget about this pitchfork now. Let's delete that smaller pitchfork. And I think on the euro as well, we can probably, we broke out that pitchfork to the downside. So these this terminal overshoot often um, anticipates a reversal. It's the other thing. So let's just get rid of these smaller pitchforks. No longer needed when you've got such high time frame support off of the uh, the bigger pitchfork. So yes, I think this is a very significant level right here. And you can see also on the euro, sorry, we're going back and forth a little bit. That has got to be seen as an impulse of one, two, three, four, five. That no doubt is a corrective move. So you'd expect a rally here in the euro. We could be actually catching it at the absolute bottom potentially. Okay, so very interesting time, September 2022. We could be seeing a massive weakening and deleveraging in the dollar um, and other paired forex currencies that things that are paired are against it could start to rally. So that is the euro we've discussed. Pound, here is the pitchfork of interest. So first, second, third pivot, modified shift. We took out that low. That's interesting as well. So we've taken out that low. You could argue it's a big double bottom. This chart, I used to have a chart that went back a lot further than this. This is, I would, I wouldn't say, I would call it a double bottom. That, uh, but we've taken out that low. So it's taken out all of the stops that were at that point, if there were still any from 1985. Okay, so it's been a while, but those stops have now been taken out, and we have hit again. A very important 0 0.5 line of this uh, downward pitchfork. And let's zoom in. Let's see what the price action is doing here. Again, just like on the euro, we are shooting upwards. So impulse. You can see the impulse here. 15 minute time frame. Let's have a look. Very clear five wavish move. One, two, three, four, five. Sideways move. Wave two. Or is it an ABC? If it's an ABC, we're going to come down pretty soon. Okay because let's 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 stick a shift pitchfork on this something like that uh, that's a shift you'd expect a bit of resistance at the upper median line okay so coming up to here potentially 1.11 that's where your resistance would probably come in if we're looking at a um uh, a corrective move up but already look at this that's your five wave move that's your three down Where's the five move up on this? This is a one, two. The three is going to be all the way up here, four, five. So it's clearly going to be an extended wave, most likely. So we'd like it, this is a li very likely to be following more of an original pitchfork, as such, which we're already doing, lower median line support into the 0 0.5, where, where we might just hover for a moment, but I don't think it'll last too long. Probably taking us into the median line for the three of wave three. Then we pause four, five, probably up to here. 
maybe up to 1.2 okay that's where i would anticipate a one two up to 1.2 for this wave three then you get a bit of a pause could could come down quite a bit maybe i think that'll be a nice move back to the median line then we go up for five okay so something like that so there'll be an opportunity here there'll be a probably an opportunity here getting above this median line for this last leg of the third yeah uh, arguably there's an opportunity now once we get through the 0 0.5 line as well but what i'm seeing here is strength on euro and pound and that could actually solve the um save rather the gold um gold market so let's just take a look at gold because gold will often move in a similar way to euro and inverse to the dollar or dollar yen so let's just pull up the gold chart which is here so gold, you can see just we're on the hour, sorry, 15 minute time frame, just like we've seen on euro and pound, really rallied hard as dollars coming down. So I think there's opportunities in Forex right now, certainly. Very important things happening in Forex. So I, I mentioned this before, one, two, three, four, five. Now I, I became a little bit concerned once we lost this lower median line here. But we were in an oversold region as we came to the bottom of this lower warning line. Now, is this the bottom here? I want to see, actually, the wave three, how far it retraced. So let's take from the bottom of wave two to the top of wave three. We have come just beyond the 0 0.382. But don't forget, you can allow high time frame wicks. To, let's go on the weekly. You know, this is a massive move from 2016. I think it's reasonable to look at it on the weekly time frame. It's only really, we've had one... Let's zoom in here. Beneath the 0.382 and beneath this lower warning line, beneath this lower median line, we've only had one close so far. This could take us back up to here, which very likely will for the end of the week. There are only one weekly candle that scared us, a weekly close down here. And that, that was what scared me last week. Um, but very swift recovery indeed, as the dollar seems to have topped out. So as the dollar seems to have topped out, gold has held on held on to this very important level so i must admit i'm a big fan of gold i like the way it moves um so perhaps some very good long opportunities here on gold i would like to see it back above this lower median line ideally back above the 0.382 fib retracement so i would say the best opportunities right now in the markets across the board if you prefer long going long rather than you know shorting which a lot of people do i would be looking at gold with the invalidation point being you know coming this, this, this swing low you can't lose that swing low so that's your invalidation point right there now of course we've already moved quite far away from that so you've got to be cautious about timing the, the move uh, it's going to have a relatively wide stop but that's the kind of move that i'll be looking out for gold i think is a uh, setting up very very interestingly so bitcoin ethereum crypto stocks and all all of that i see weakness continuing forex is where potential opportunities are gold also with uh, moves to the upside on pound euro and gold at least at the time of making this video of course things may change but this is how things are looking right now so it's a very interesting moment and i will give another update next week to see how things are progressing but uh yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up there, guys. All right, take care.